following episode of The Imperfects contains references to suicide. If this is content you'd prefer not to hear or find triggering, then we suggest maybe skipping this episode. The Imperfects presents a very special episode. Sit back, relax, and grab yourself your own cup of vulnerability. This is the Vulnerability House. Back in the tea house again, um, one of our favourite, most calming... So, uh, format? Uh, format? For some reason I was going to say sensual, oh. but it's not really sensual at all. No. But it, I think because I'm just, because the music gets me in this, gets me all riled up, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, look, today is a very special episode. You, you've seen the name in the title of the episode. You're all, you are all chomping at the bit. This is a guy who, um, v- real... Real shy, like hates being on TV, hates being on radio. You rarely get him out, and um, so he's doing a real solid for us to come out of hiding to uh, to be on. He's he's admired me for years, and he's he's stoked to be here. <laughs> Stand up comedian, uh, co host of the project, has his own podcast, has everything, written books, done the whole thing. You know him, you love him. He's Peter Hellier. <laughs> wow, I, I, that was. So great. Um, it was mm. the fact that you didn't mention any of my credits. Um, don't need was, to. Don't uh, need to. You're, you're at a point now in your career where people are like, y- you are the brand, Pete. So would I get away, if, if if anyone in Australia says Pete, yeah, are they thinking of me like the way they do Kylie? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I reckon. <laughs> or, I, or Pete Evans. I reckon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hellier or Evans. <laughs> Much of a muchness. Yeah. This is the conversation that the project had years ago. <laughs> Hellier or Evans. <laughs> we need a Pete. We know we need a Pete. They're very similar. <laughs> Every show needs a Pete. Yeah. No, I think I think you're the I think you're number one Pete. Okay. What would you say, guys? I think would you say? I'm trying to think of the I mean weird to say not now. Yeah. Yes. It would be weird. It, yeah. Pete had Zoglu, the leg spinner for uh, oh, the yeah. Melbourne Renegades, apart from him, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's about it. Really. Actually, that yeah, now that you mention it, yeah, Pete that's... Russell Clark. Although it's probably more of a Peter, isn't he? Would you go by Peter or Pete? Oh, uh, either or, but Pete generally. Yeah, if someone called you Peter, it's not, it's not, it doesn't sound weird to me. You'd answer them. I actually, I would answer, I would answer them. Yeah. Yes, I would. I, I would. actually, when I let you into the building, the guy who opened the door for you, his name is Peter or Pete, and I got so. <laughs> Overwhelmed by the fact you're both Peters, I didn't introduce you. Pete t- overload. It was, it was yeah. too much, and I yeah. thought, is it? Do I say Pete? This is Peter, or Peter? It's Peter, or yeah. Peter? This is, it was too much, and I just awkwardly just said, "Come with me." Well, it's a rare name. It's a, it, 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 <laughs> you don't hear many Pete's out there. It's weird it, when it's, you see too. Isn't I it? Know, my parents weren't hippies; they were just <laughs> 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 they just thought outside the square. Yeah. We're gonna call him Pete. <laughs> really, <laughs> Pete, Pete. What a weird word, Pete. Okay. I've always said to my mum, you put no thought into my name at all. Just a bit more time. Yeah. You didn't have to rush it. <laughs> yeah. But it's Peter technically, isn't it? Like it, I've, is. I've, it is technically Peter. Are you credited as Peter Hellier though? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm generally credited as Peter. Yeah. But Pete is, is you know, I'm happy with Pete. Yeah. You'd never you'd never introduce yourself as Peter. Uh, no. Mm. No. We'll definitely keep all this in. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is the crux of it. This is actually what I want to talk about because so I'm the most vulnerable. Yeah, when I'm saying my own name. Oh, God, okay, we'll buckle up, everyone. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey, do you think I'm name dropping when I introduce myself? <laughs> you make me feel very vulnerable. <laughs> Jeez, okay. Nobody's ever mentioned it. Yeah, well, I've, ne- I've never said hi. I'm Peter Helley, and they've gone, oh, name dropper. Yeah, like, no one's ever said. I just think you- somebody's gonna, somebody's going to at some point. Are you? Do you think you're? In all seriousness, you know how there are certain people, and particularly, I think in like TV, radio, film industry, where, and it's of an older generation probably, that will introduce themselves by their full name. 
Right. Like, yes. do you, would you ever do that? Like, hey, Peter, I mean, it's obvious, but would, would you ever go like, hey, um, hey, Peter Hellier? Um, no, I'm, I'm going the other way. I usually say, hey, P. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. So you're, I'm, you're... I guess I'm part of the younger brigade still. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. You know that. Uh, okay. I mean, we're the same age, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pretty, pretty sure. Hey, mate. Pretty sure. I mean, you're obviously late to the party, but... Um, Can I check your we're glad ID? You, you're... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, made me think of Peter Harvey when you said that. So Peter Harvey's another one. Oh, Peter Harvey. Huge Peter. He would yeah. say Peter Harvey. Of course. Well, that's his job. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, also says, he says Canberra at the end of it as well, no matter where he is. Yeah. Peter, Peter Harvey, Harvey Canberra. Canberra. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, let's get down to it. Can, so, can I ask a question of, of course, Peter yeah. first? Yeah. Um, one of your shows, um, How to Stay Married. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Uh, ironically, well, not a, no, this is not ironic at all, but no, it is actually. My wife and I were having a disagreement. Get through the irony. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> whether, it, whether it is, whether it isn't, it doesn't matter. Pete is a just, busy man. Just, <laughs> just cut to the compliment. There we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my wife and I were arguing the other night while how to well, while how to stay how to stay married was on in yep. the background, and we had the sound down so we could hear each other's argument. Okay, well, and what, what it's doing in the background is just sounding less like a compliment than I was, <laughs> was anticipating. Can someone turn that shit down? <laughs> it was it was in the foreground and we could hear it, and then we had to turn it down to mm. disagree about something. Yes, uh, and we we don't argue much, but we were. And in the background, there was, I just, I wanted to know for so long what was going on. It made me laugh. Well, you know that laugh when you're at school and you're in trouble and you just can't laugh because you're getting more trouble and you're just trying so, it's, it's yeah, the best yeah. type of laugh where you're like, this is so funny, but I can't laugh. In the background, over my wife's shoulder, I could see you sitting in a room, in a room and the whole room was lined with cricket pads all over, all over the walls. Yes, yes, And yes. I just, I was, it, to me, it was just a great visual. It made me laugh so much. And I'm, what was happening? There was, uh, so that was soundproofing for a podcast that my character was doing. Oh. He did it, he did it with cricket, cricket pads. pads. <laughs> we need to take those down and put cricket yeah, pads Yeah, you up. guys. I walked in here and I thought, there's no cricket pads. These guys are obviously a sh- shabby organisation uh, here. But, yeah, so my character uh, in this latest series with Darren Gilshannon's character, who played Terry, we started the podcast um, and we just kind of spoke about, uh, you know, uh, men's issues. And then, uh, without us knowing, we thought it was just like you know, hot, funny takes of you know men's issues. But then we got um, it, we yeah, we got big, big listeners uh, numbers through Louisiana and the, the American South, and all of a sudden we realised we were actually playing into the men's alt right movement. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we had to close the podcast down. <laughs> So, oh, it's good to get context. I was I've been curious for quite some time. But that laugh that you speak of, that was always my downfall as a kid. That like and Ryan, you've probably seen it on Rover. As soon as we're mm. told like not to laugh. One of oh. my favorite things when we're on set is to when they gotta get the um uh oh, what do you call it? The you know, for the sound. Um the uh um, boom pole? Wild, no, but wild. To, to get the what wild, wild? Yeah, oh, get, wild, get, yeah, yeah, wild. So you basically you're recording everyone being quiet and, and the nature's sound so that you can you can use that in the edit. And whenever we, we go to do that, I will, because I, I know that I'm not supposed to laugh, mm. nothing has to happen. I just all of a sudden, I'll be like, come on, guys, come on, let's get wild. Let's get wild. <laughs> and as soon as I've said, I just, I can't look at anyone else. I, I need yeah. to laugh. And even as a kid, I, was, I grew up Catholic and I wanted to be an older boy. My mum said, you're not being an older boy because you'll embarrass the family. You, you'll laugh. Are you saying on, older on, or alter? Alter. Alter. Boy, alter, 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 alter yeah. Oh, yeah, I was an older yeah. I was 38. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> no, I was an altar boy, and my mum said, "No, you will embarrass us." And I, I pleaded for a long time, and she said, "Okay." And I said, "I promise, I won't laugh." And seriously, the first mass, <laughs> it was like a Sunday mass, big crowd, lockout, and <laughs> um, and we we was at the stage where I getting communion ready. So you kind of you line up the the four altar boys would line up at the back, and you're wearing this you know like gown. And the priest is at the the um the altar the ta- you know the table with the wine and the and the Eucharist and he he sneezed and he went he with his back hand he had to like lift up his the back of his and he looked like his hand was in his ass <laughs> and I'm just there going this is unfair this is a test <laughs> this is a test 
This is, I've never seen a priest have to reach into his own gown and rummage around <laughs> with four older boys at the back. And uh, I, I lost it. I lost it. So, <laughs> I'm I think very like, aware of that feeling. Like you're, through, I'm pretty bad at laughing when whenever I'm filming something. Yeah, but you are, you are my Achilles heel for sure. <laughs> like whenever we've shot stuff together, it's just like it's imp- like this is great where I can just openly laugh because I think like in my opinion, you know, America, and I mean this sincerely in, in and in a good way. But in America, you know, you've got people like Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell is someone who is just. He he's instantly funny. Mm. Like the, he doesn't have to do anything. He's got an aura about him that just, and I've always found that about you, Pete. Where it's just like, and even before I knew you, like before I came in, onto Rove and stuff, and that, that there's something. And then when I'm actually shooting a scene with you or doing, it's just impossible. <laughs> we, it's impossible. Well, it's a bit. It's a, it's a bit of a two way street that one because you're you're. Had the, you had the same impact on me, and we do have to avoid eye contact. Yeah, I think like we're we'll do, we'll doing scenes. I'll be looking at your forehead or something, or looking over your shoulder, and it's one of the worst things I do is is if I if if we're rehearsing something before we shoot some you know, a scene, if I acknowledge that something's funny, like you know, like if I kind of go, "Geez, yeah. that's funny. That's a funny line," yeah. or, or and then we might start riffing on it. Yeah. It's the worst thing for me because then I'm like I'm thinking of that when I'm shooting the scene. Oh yeah. Even though it might not be in the script, but I'm thinking of the things we discussed about that line or we yes. added a line. Yeah. Sometimes I've had to take out like I've added a line that I thought was so funny that I couldn't couldn't get through it. So even though it's probably the funniest line in the scene, it doesn't get through because we're like, no, nah, let's we're losing light. We got to go, guys. It's so <laughs> annoying. <laughs> yeah. It's the worst. It is. Well, okay, so. In all sincerity, though, Pete, thank you for coming on on our podcast. Thank you. Um, Great to be in the tea house. It's very cool to have you here. Um, even though we're friends, I've looked up to you, admired you for a long time. Um, and this is really exciting because, as everyone knows, the way the tea house works, um, the way the vulnerability tea house works, why not say the pun when you can? Um, <laughs> the way the vulnerability tea house works is we have a deck of cards and... On each of those cards is a question written. And so, Pete, you're going to, the deck's in front of you. It's a deck of Bluey cards. Um, we all love Bluey. We love Bluey. It's also the only deck of cards that Hugh had nearby when we first started it. Mm-hmm. So, that's all we've got. Uh, we've written questions. Uh, you'll choose three cards and one of, and you you don't have to answer any of them, but if you choose to answer, be a shit episode if you don't, but <laughs> if you don't, if you, if you want to choose one of them, uh, choose one, answer it, and uh, hopefully it will Bring out some vulnerability Excellent. in you. Should we wait for the first course or is it just um, <laughs> <laughs> we've got we the tea here? But should we wait for the dumplings or uh, yeah. scones? Uh, yep. Yeah, they just oh, let me give me two minutes. I'll just go <laughs> I'll just go I'll just go grab them. Um uh, no, no dumplings, okay. it's tea only. We'll, we'll get into it and then we'll okay. work it. We'll work it out later. Okay, let's go. Yeah. All right. So the top three, is top, that right? Yeah, just grab the top three. There we go. All right. Okay, so the first one uh, is how would you like to be a better person? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, second one is what fear would you like to be free of? And the third mm-hmm. one is what would you tell someone you once knew who has since passed away? Oh. I mean, these aren't as funny as I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's up to you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, well, these are, inter- these are uh, very, obviously very interesting areas, as I'm sure they all are. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, how would I be a better person? I mean, geez, we... have already clocked it. Clocked it. Yeah. <laughs> Done the lap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is plenty, there, there is plenty, uh, I, I think I, I, the older I get, the more I, I think I fear. Um. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I feel... Yeah, I feel like, uh, yeah, I, I, my, I'm more aware of my fears mm. growing up. I think when you're younger, you kind of have this, you know, you're, you're, you know, you might be afraid of the dark, or you, but then there's more abstract things that you become oh, yeah. Yeah. afraid of. Um, uh, and what would you tell someone who you once knew who has since passed away? Um, yeah, I mean, that's probably an area we could um, uh, explore um, mm. because, I, you know, I have, I've been quite lucky to um you know i'm 46 um and you know if i if i was to go through the people 
close to me that I've lost has been grandparents, which is always sad, but inevitable. Um, uh, some aunties. Um, and the one that kind of comes to mind um, is the passing of, of um, uh, Richard Marsland, mm. who um, who I worked with on radio and Rich, Rich uh, uh, worked on Rove Live and Rye, I know you know uh, Rich or New mm. Rich. Um, yeah. So Rich was... Uh, he he loved, like he loved entertainment and he loved radio and that's where I was working with him. Uh, I think no, we no, we rove before uh, and he loved television as well. He, he this yeah. He also had a real like he he respected radio in a way that I haven't met anyone mm. you know respect radio as much as as, as Richard Marsden. He had a he was you know he was a genius. His ideas, he's an ideas man, and um, yeah, he was he had a real reverence uh, for radio. So we were working on a, a show uh, with myself and uh, Miff Warhurst, and he was, you know, uh, on air with us and, and coming to do sketches and, and, and various things. And um, he uh, just not the nicest guy on top of all of this. N- the nicest guy, like yeah, sometimes too nice. Like you had to say to him, mate, <laughs> yeah. like you know, you can. You can, uh, you know, this can be an argument if you want. Like, you know, you can actually, you know. Um, yeah, and you, you can actually, and this is like the kind of, I guess, sort of uh, like sad irony in the end, but it's like you, you, you can not start a sentence with st- with sorry, Rich. Like, <laughs> yes. like he would start every sort of sentence with sorry, but um, it's like, it's all right. What are you apologizing for? Yeah. Yeah. There's a great story that Marty Sheargold has told that, that um, he, Richard loved, um, uh, Farmers Union iced coffee. He was a, a, mm. a, a proud South Australian through and through, and he and and not a tradie, not not, not a tradie. <laughs> yeah. One of the, one of the one of the rare ones, and he loved that that um, you know that sometimes I get Farmers Union sent to the radio station, but I think he, he outside of that he purchased his own you know Farmers Union, and he sacked the fridge, you know one of the mini fridges they have around radio stations, and Marty came in. And I said Richard had paid for these, and Marty came in and thought, oh cool, we've been sent. Farmers Union nice coffee. I don't normally drink it for sure. Well, well, I'll try it. And then starts taking off these cartons, <laughs> drinking drinking two a day. And then he realizes that Richard's been paying for these, you know, Farmers Union nice coffees and goes up to him and says, Oh, he goes, mate, I didn't realise they were your your Farmers Union nice coffee. The first word out of Richard's mouth, I'm sorry, mate, I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. It's like that was the thing. You you would bring him up on it again, mate, you don't have to apologize. That 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 is such a classic <laughs> Richard story though that mm. that sums him up yeah <laughs> yeah um so uh so we were doing a radio show and he uh was a much loved part of our show he was like as much as a show as um, myself or, or me for it was and then um on the we did one year at, at the end of our first year at triple m we we left about six months after this but um he uh, we did our final show and he did this amazing sketch, uh, which was a, a he was great at satire and parody, and, and he did a great uh, Pete Murray, um, uh, sat, you know, uh, parody. And it was it was so funny. It was it was it was really funny. Uh, we went uh, had drinks kind of afterwards, and um, he uh, he was he was in in good form. We were all in good form. We had finished a year. It's always good to finish a, a radio year. And um, I said to him. Mate, do you, uh, you know, what are you doing for Christmas? And he said, oh, you know, I've got a few ideas. I might head over to the US or I've got another friend somewhere else. But he wasn't going home to Adelaide with uh, with his parents uh, and his family. He decided he was going to take off overseas. And, and I was like, okay. And I, I sense, you know, that he, I was surprised that he wasn't sure what he was doing, that he hadn't locked it in. And I said, listen, if, you, if you're stuck and you're in Melbourne, feel free to come over and spend Christmas with my, my family. You know, we'd love to have you. He goes, yeah, cool. That's great. We gave him a hug. Actually, so I love you, and um, and uh, we went off, and that was the last time I saw him. So the next day, I got a phone call um, from a manager. Um, it's funny we we uh, I was at home, and I had a very kind of light argument with my wife, uh, and I just went down to get the paper or something, just to kind of you know probably walking away from a, uh, an argument. And um, and uh, my manager rang and said that um, uh, they found. Uh, Richard's body, um, and I remember thinking I was in, I I wasn't processing it like I was like 
Oh, they've. No, I think he said. Sorry, I think he said they found Richard Marsland in, in, wherever he was. And I was like, "Oh, is he okay?" And he said, "No, they, he's 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 um he, he's dead, and um he had taken his own life." Um, and I remember just walking back into the house and seeing Bridge, and she was, I think, going to fire up at me for round two. And uh, she just saw my look and she said, "What's going on?" And I said, "Richard's gone." And um, and yeah, so that um, that was probably when when we if we talk about somebody who has passed. And what we would say to them, that's the one I think of the most, I think, um, because it's it's the only, the closest person to me who's ever done anything like that and left under those circumstances. Um, How old was he at that stage? 30, like, I don't know, 30. Yeah, it's a good question, actually. Mid, His mid, time gets... Um, <laughs> it's like mid-30s? Like, yeah, maybe. yeah. And he was, you know, he was... Um, he was just so energetic. Like I just, you cannot. Like my understanding of of what suicide can be, just went through through the roof mm. as far as like it's not what I would have thought. I just never have would have thought. That, you know, I, I didn't know. We I think we've know we've learned so much over you know more recent years of what you know. Uh, I'm not like I think growing up, you know, I was very much. If you commit suicide, you're selfish, you know. Like, mm. and I'm not saying when Richard did that, I still had that view, um, but I didn't know that you could be that outwardly happy, producing still extremely funny, you know, sketches. And I think what was tough was I was in a room. Um, I mean, you guys know that when you're in a radio studio together, how close you you become. You, you know, I know some showbiz. We all like to say, oh, we're like a family. But I think radio does fast track that because mm. you are literally mm. in the early hours of the morning uh, in a room together. It's a tough gig. So you are, you kind of got each other's back and you are between the songs, you are, you are sharing whatever's going on in your life, you tend to share it. And that's what makes it hard to kind of reconcile that I was in a room with uh, Richard for three hours a morning you know, plus the you know the the time in the office outside of that for an hour before, maybe an hour later, and I just did not see any of this coming. Yeah, it it, it was it. So, so so I I worked with with Rich on on Rove. So he was a writer on on Rove when I was when I was there and spent like lots of time. But then also we became friends outside of work. And but like you say, Pete, like it is. And the, and you know and and you're right. Like since then, we've sort of learnt so much about depression, and I mean, still, it's still such a mystery, obviously, in so many ways for so many reasons. But the, I was the same, like because Pete, you're the one that called me and told me. So I found out from you. I was at <clears throat> I was at um, uh, just got to a friend's barbecue, and we hadn't seen them. This is like high school friends hadn't seen them in like been trying to organize this catch up for years and then we I got to this barbecue and we were there and then you called me um which was weird um pretty rare it's like <laughs> hey <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> from rove <laughs> and but you called you called me and and just and told me and it 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 made no sense I couldn't process it because like you say he was the most seemingly happy supportive encouraging passionate person you, you, it's just like what are you what are you talking about made, made no sense mm. um how long ago was this sorry i would have been 10 10 right, years ago okay. yeah. yeah yeah a bit, uh, a bit more a bit over i think yeah oh, I'm, it's, it's funny actually because his anniversary comes up you know late later in the year december each year and, and um i sometimes miss it like like as far as oh that was in the first few years i, I knew it and now for whatever reason it's just not how i Mm. I process the memory of him. I don't. I don't necessarily go to that date to kind of commemorate him. Um, you know, I think for the first few years, I would, you know, give his parents a call on that date, and then it just that date just became another date to me. And I, but it doesn't mean I don't think about him a whole bunch. You know, like I mean, I was in New York um, maybe about five years ago, and I just I and I was I, I was with a, a, a friend and they'd gone on to LA and I was, so I was going to spend a day or two in New York by myself and I went into this bar and I realised it was Richard's 
uh, anniversary. Now, I'm not sure how I realized. I'm not sure if I just recognized the date. Or I think maybe even Charlie Pickering had texted me and just said, hey, it's, you know, it's uh, Richard's anniversary. And I was just, uh, yeah, one of those kind of, kind of classic New York bars where, you know, he's mainly seating at the bar. And I just, I just burst into tears. Like I was basically covering my face. And I, annoying because I just ordered the fucking drink. Um, <laughs> This is going to go to waste. Um, and, but it was like, it was, it was just in a way that hadn't happened for years. Like there was a lot of tears when it happened. And it, I, I, I feel myself get emotional if I, you know, if I speak about him or um, if I, you know, if I think about him and, you know, I did a piece on, on, on about him on, on um, the project a couple of years ago and that was a really hard thing to do. I spoke to his parents for it and, um, and, uh, but, yeah, I just, I just sobbed and me and Charlie exchanged a few messages about it. And, um, but yeah, it was just really weird how that had come out. And I, I wonder if that was more to do with me being over like a way where I could just, I could just let it out hmm. and not, cause I went through a stage where, and I only realized this later on was that I, I, I hadn't really dealt with it and my wife was aware that I wasn't dealing with it. She wasn't sure how to let me know, and I, I, in my mind, I wasn't trying. I, I just didn't want to bring that darkness. Yeah, you know, we had a young family. I didn't want to kind of bring that out and kind of let them have to deal with it. But that made it worse, I think, because I wasn't dealing with it. So, what does that look like for you when you say you weren't dealing with it? Does that you didn't want to talk about it? You weren't discussing with people, or were you unhealthy yeah, it, behaviors off the back of no, it? No, it, it actually was, and that's what makes it even trickier to kind of understand it because it was years later where Bridge said, you know, I don't think you have dealt with Richard and, and, um, and it's, you know, um, and we, she couldn't necessarily pinpoint, I didn't go off the rails. It wasn't like I was, you know, um, drinking or, or, you know, lent into the drug use or anything like that. It was, it was just, I just closed down. I was mm-hmm. harder to, to talk to from her point of view. Yeah. So from my point of view, I'm just kind of like, okay, well, I'm just going to, I'll keep this in because I feel like I'm, I'm under control. But from her point of view, it's just somebody who was all of a sudden at times much harder to talk to mm. than I had been previously. Yeah. So, I mean, without, I mean, thanks so much for talking about it. I mean, this is, it is, it's emotional. It's emotional for me. Like when you said, when you said, even just hearing Rich's name, like said in a way that is in this context, it's, uh, yeah, it, it got me a little bit emotional, but. But I would be interested if you feel comfortable. Like I'd be interested to know, like, because on that question it says, like, you know, what would you say? Like, what would you tell the person? Mm-hmm. Is, is there something in your mind that you would tell tell them? Um, I mean, I would, you know, I would probably say sorry if I, you know, like, sorry if you. It's ironic. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go, Helly. You don't have to apologise about everything. <laughs> You've done nothing wrong, Pete. What are you apologising for? It is extremely ironic, but you know, and I and I, I don't, you know, I, I'm sure everyone who's been through this, you think back on, and I'm sure you've done it right. You think back of all the moments, exchanges you've had. I mean, I literally, like I said, you know, four, you know, four or five hours a day with him, three of them in a really small room. Um, you know, was there things that I missed, and there, you know, there was. There was one time where we went and saw a movie, uh, you know, and I said, well, you know, we'll grab a beer. And he said, oh, no, I'm, just, I'm not drinking at the moment. It's, I don't like the way it's making me feel. And I'm, I'm happy that I didn't go, oh, come on, mate. And, you know, like, you know, mm. come on, yes, I've got. There was none mm. of that. It was just like, okay, sure. But I didn't. Which is a classic Pete line. Come on, yeah. you soft cock. I know. Yeah. I, You're often. I said this off air, but yeah. when there's no whiskey in this tea. I was like, well, you got, this is a soft cock <laughs> yeah. vulnerability tea house. The last yeah, vulnerability yeah. tea house was a really hardcore place. <laughs> that yeah. saloon doors. Yeah. I know. I mean, yeah, people are often really intimidated by Pete when they go out with him. <laughs> really. <laughs> it's a real issue. <laughs> Such a scary guy. Very, very yeah. much so. Mm. Um, and he. Um, so I'm glad I didn't, you know, it's just, yeah, as Ryan suggests, it's not something that I would, uh, I tend to do. But, um, but knowing, I guess, a bit more than I do now, I wonder if I hadn't, if I, you know, had of 
asked a bit more about, you know, it's the line, I don't like the way it's making me feel, um, that kind of rings a little bit in my um, in my head that I perhaps could have investigated um, a little bit more. Um, but, um, yeah, and I, I think, I think I, the, but more so than that, I think I would just like to say to him, like, you know, like he was, he was, he was worth so much, you know, to to so many people, and that he, I think, what caught me by surprise um, afterwards was realizing that he maybe had more ambition than I had, I had thought, you know, mm-hmm. like he, he really had, and we had spoken about projects, and he had a, a film that he had, he had written that he was really passionate about, um, uh, but. It wasn't. There was a moment where we had to. Um, I don't think I was telling anyone this, but we had to. There was a promotion opportunity for the, our show uh, to promote off the back of another movie. I think there was James Bond movies happening, and they they it was a promotion. You know, when you see, you know, uh, join us in the morning for the code word, and you can win. And I couldn't do it because it was on Channel Seven, and I was contracted with Channel Ten, and Miff was on the ABC with Specs and Specs, so she couldn't do it. So. They asked Richie if he could do it, and he was like, "Yeah, I can, I can do it, and yeah, I can even have some fun with it." And and um, and he did. He got. He, he was classic rich. He just put every little bit of creativity into it, and his time and effort. And he was in a tuxedo, and he was having so much fun, like so much better than what we would have done. Like we would have just gone, "Hey, it's Peter Miff here," and you know, catches in the morning. And and but he actually put the, the thought and 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 you know made it really sing. And um, and we were like really kind of um. Mate, that was that was great. That was and we were like, and we did a thing where we like rang the um uh, the station and said, "Oh, listen, we were watching the TV. We want to know who that guy was on the, on, on the screen." This is, and this is on air. We, I think we pre-recorded it. And um, we said Richard Mar, uh, you know, he said Richard Marsland. Like, that, that's his name. We 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 love him. More of him, please. And the receptionist says something like, oh, "I'm sorry, I don't know who that is." Mm. And we kind of laughed and and, and and all of that. And then we finished recording it. And and it was the first time I saw Rich. Almost his ego had been wounded. Oh, yeah. And it was kind of when I it was the first peak for me that you know he does have ambition outside of being you know uh, you know one part of a, a a radio team. And I felt I felt really. You know, and we all thought we were all, and he was making jokes in there as well. Like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like he was just listening to us do this. It was like, and it was about in our minds pumping him up and saying what a great job he had done. But when she, when the, the receptionist had said, "I don't know who that is," and no, nothing against that that receptionist because you know he was doing a radio promotion, um, that I kind of went, "Oh, okay." Um, yeah, and then when he had passed away. We saw these things that he had done, you know, because you see mm. the life and the, the amount of the, the tapes that his his parents had, and, and and of him and his work that he'd done in South Australia before he came to uh, to Victoria and AM Adelaide, and and um, the radio stuff he had done over there. You kind of think this was somebody who had worked really, like, was going for his dream, and his dream hadn't finished yet. Like he was still he was still going for it, mm. and um. I mean, I, I envisaged working with Rich for the rest of my career, you know, and he probably, and that's probably how I imagined it. Like, oh, you know, whatever, whatever I'm going to be involved with, you know, you're going to, you know, an open ticket. But like, he was probably thinking, when can I lose this hell of a guy? <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to, we're going to shirk him off so I can, you know, go on to be, do yeah. bigger and better things. Well, that's what, that's what he would tell me. And I was like, surely not. <laughs> <laughs> Pete's a lovely guy. Give him a break. <laughs> Um, no, 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 but I, I, I think that was the that was the really sad thing for me as well. Like after, so I and uh, Tim Bartley, a friend friend of, friend of ours, we put together like at, for the funeral for the wake, put together like the a video which was like a kind of a best of Richard and all the work he's done, like this sort of reel of different stuff. And I was. I had no because Rich was not never someone to talk about anything he'd done. Like he was, he was very much like a. He, he, from my point of view, he was sort of happy being, for want of a better term, like the sidekick or the kind of you know the, you know he before he was doing the show with Pete, he did a show with Tony Martin and like he, he the 
what I knew of Pete is he, uh, what I knew of Rich, he wasn't the um, the so called you know leading man or whatever you want to call. It. But he's also kind of a, a void of ego, wasn't he? Like, totally, you, you saw no ego there. Yep. And and to be honest, most of us are sidekicks. Like there there are very few people who are necessarily yeah. You know, in in the scheme of things, on the billboard, if mm. if you like. I mean, I was a psychic with Row for you yeah. know uh, for for many years, so it was never something that I even thought was you know looked down upon. Mm. Um, but you're right. It was like when I and then when I put together the video, I was like seeing like he is sent like in South Australia, he was the co-host of the morning show on on television, like kind of like like I mean, not like Larry Emder, but you know, like that sort of role, like a koshy kind of like front and center, and it was brilliant mm. like clearly influenced by the graham kennedys and as a student of television like he loved television and loved radio and that was what was like doubly tragic it was tragic to lose him as a friend but then to sort of see like oh this is this is what you wanted mm. this is what he you know he wanted to, to, to he wanted to to fly and for whatever reason because of his humility and because of the fact that he he was supportive and wanted to support the people he admired and loved like Tony and Pete and that that he yeah he he wasn't able to and I, and who knows the reasons that led him to the decision he made like we don't know um but that was the thing that yeah that was tragic wasn't it like watching that video I was like god he was, he was brilliant yeah brilliant it's easy that sometimes to, to you know if, when you know Heath Ledger you know leaves and 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 we go, we know that, we're, that there's a whole bunch of work that we've missed out on, you know, uh, amongst all the other sadness and, and tragedy involved with that. But someone like Rich, I think it's really, I like, I do like talking about him because I think, I don't think most, the people who knew Rich and, you know, uh, fans of, of his through yeah, Get This and, and the various uh, places know how good he was. But I think most of us who consume entertainment in Australia uh, don't realise the impact he 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 was going to have, like he would have been a major, a major figure. Yeah. Like you probably wouldn't have got him on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here. Oh, I would have called in a pretty big favour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you no, said that. yes really quickly. You said oh, yes. <laughs> you said yes a lot quicker got, than I was expecting. I've got an email trail. <laughs> And I'm happy to go through it. <laughs> there were deals done. You do your podcast, I do mine. Oh, that's true. I do have to go on his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, well, yeah. But you know, it's uh, that is that's an. In, in, thank you for talking about that, yeah. Pete. It's um, yeah. He was an amazing, amazing man. I mean, you guys would have loved him. Would have absolutely loved him. The, yeah. Yeah. What I can't help but think about, and and the vulnerability house is never about offering solutions and saying, well, here's what you could do. It's not. It's just really about an opportunity for people to open up a bit and then... Ryan said you're going to give me all the solutions. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. <laughs> was so. that in the contract as well? <laughs> it was part of uh, it. I said, Hugh's great. Hugh's brilliant. <laughs> Any issues, he'll solve them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good because I do, I do have something that I did want to say and it's something I've wanted to talk about for a while, but and I think this is a perfect time to do it. And, and it's... I, I've been through something really similar, really a scorer at my career club. His name was Luke. He's an autistic man and he... he almost sort of um, gave me a little cry for help and I didn't pay attention to it. I missed it. Um, and, and by the way, I'm not saying you missed it because it, it sounds like there are really no signs there at all. My, I actually, this, this guy, Luke, he used to call me in the off-season and say, how long to cricket? And I'd say I was three months and he'd go, God, it's a long time. And he'd just hang up straight away. And he'd call me a month later, how long to cricket? It was two months. And he'd go, God, such a long time and hang up. And then once he called me completely out of, it was only, it was like two or three weeks to a cricket. And I said, oh, mate, it's two or three weeks away. And he goes, that feels like a long time for me. And I went, ah, oh, man, you'll be right. And, um, and I sort of said, anyway, you know, I'll see you in a couple of weeks and I have the phone and then call from the president of the career club a couple of weeks later. Or, no, sorry, two nights later saying you've taken his life. And, and um, my wife had said to me, oh, is he okay? And, you know, you should call him and just see. If and I said, no, 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 he'll be fine. I'll see him a couple. So I didn't, my job's mental health and I missed it totally. I totally missed it. And I, I think about that a lot, especially this time of year because it happened in it was September, October. Um, Actually, it happened in the week of Are You Okay Day, and I've been thinking a lot about Are You Okay Day because I think it's a wonderful initiative, and I love it so much, and it's just done so much for mental health. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful initiative. I think the thing is, I think the issue is, I think we take it a little bit too literally, and I say that because um, last year it was near the end of Melbourne's second lockdown, and I was battling a bit, and I'd done four, I'd gone and done four talks for Are You Okay Day for different organisations. I was saying, ask the question, you're okay, and 
and I'm went for a walk and I got home, not in the best place because of lockdown and everything. And a, a girl I know saw me and she goes, anyway, it's are you okay today? I better ask, are you okay? And I went, yeah, I'm fine, yeah. And I and even I couldn't say, like my job's mental health, I couldn't say to her, oh, actually, yeah, it's going, I'm, you know, things are a bit tough at the moment. And it's just ever since then I've been thinking about it. And I think I, I think we need to not take are you okay day as in like you need to say to people, are you okay? I think asking someone, are you okay, from a standing start, it's like saying to a sprinter, or anyone, run as fast as you can right now. Like, I think we all need to warm up to that. And I reckon a warm up for that question, are you okay, is have a think about that person. So whatever it is you do with that person, whether it's you have a beer with them, you have a coffee, you play golf, I don't know, fishing, whatever it is. And if, you, if you're slightly unsure, and this is not relevant for you, Pet, I'm not saying, because yeah. it's a very different for you, uh, because he gave you no signs really. But this is just for everyone listening. If you've got someone that you're not totally sure about, now that, Australia's opened up again and you can do this, suggest to them, let's go and do that thing that we do. So if it's coffee, a beer, golf, whatever it is, going for a walk, exercising. And when you're doing that, give them little, um, give them little opportunities, give them little ends like how are things with the family, how are things with work, how are things with your partner, and just give them little areas where they can sort of ease into it and just say, oh, yeah, it's been pretty hard at work because of this or, mm. yeah, my, yeah, my partner and I are struggling because of this. And then you sort of work your way into it. I think. I think the question, it's one, again, I'm not having a go, it's a wonderful initiative, but I think, are you okay as a question from a standing start? I don't, I think more often than not, it's not going to get you too far. It and shouldn't I just, always be taken literally. Yeah. 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 And it's, a, uh, yeah, the concept, I, I think embrace the concept, but have a think about the person, have a think about what is the best way mm. to get this person to talk to me. Mm-hmm. Because Luke, Luke's favorite thing, this score at my career club, he loved chicken satays he called them satays from the hotel satays from the pub he'd come to training and go who's getting a satay from the hotel tonight we're getting a satay and he'd order his satays and he'd destroy them and then just go home like he'd be there for a minute and he was gone <laughs> um, time over when i hung up the phone and i said to my wife penny oh, i think uh, luke just said he's that's a long she said give him a call just check if he's okay i said it'll be fine time over i would say to him mate do you want to grab a satay on the weekend <laughs> Mm. Do, you go, do you want to grab a Saturday on the weekend? He definitely would. He bloody loved them. And a Coke. He would mm. drink his Coke like, mm. his, I'll have to start watering and drink him so fast. But he would, and he would say, he'd always say, he'd loved it. So I would say, do you want to grab a chicken satay and a Coke? And while we're doing it, I'd say, how's this? How's this? How's this? How's this? Give him little opportunity. Give him little ends. Like, mm-hmm. and, and if there's someone who's giving you a slight inkling, I reckon that it's someone who does want, it's a bit of a cry for help. But. Are you okay from a standing shadow? I think. Yeah, it's true. Like in in our culture, well, especially for men, but even for women, I would, I would imagine, like a small inkling. If someone has the the courage to even give a small inkling, mm. then it probably there's a lot behind that. Yeah, yeah. there's and a lot ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, sharing your own. I think you alluded to this before, but I think there's a lot of power in sharing yeah. your own um, vulnerabilities and and things as well. I found that with mates when I say something. That, that I've been down or whatever, they might not even respond right then. It's like they need to go away and process it. But then I've been really surprised that the uh, next time they're willing to share something with me. And I think mm. um, it's one of the reasons what you've done today, Pete, is so important and so uh, powerful because so I think the more we can just sort of give little examples and not think it has to be the biggest thing in the world but just showing that it's okay, providing an example that you can sort of say something that you're not sure about gives the chance for your friend to come back even another time and and do the same to you yeah and i yeah i think i think it's a really good point of like creating the atmosphere where you can be comfortable to have those discussions like like calling again we again we are people you're saying we're not having a go at are you okay day it's an amazing thing but the call, but the call <laughs> up is are you okay day and it's and it's like and it's like they they're going oh so I'm the one you're calling to ask if I'm okay like you know like like <laughs> what about what about yeah. <laughs> well, well, you know so I think I think that yeah to and coming out of lockdown you know it's one of the things I'm keen to maintain of just like actually creating time for friends and and um and uh, they still go on those walks and to say to you know people yeah let's go meet up for, let's go for a walk instead of it always being we'll meet at the pub or yeah you know, we'll go out for dinner or you know like just actually. Um, creating opportunity to actually connect because it is hard. If somebody rings up and says, hey, you know, are, are, you, are you okay? Um, your first instance, like I said, if Ryan said, if, if, it, if it is to show a little bit of, you're not, then you, there's probably a whole heap behind that. But you, 
a lot of people's first in- inference, you know, or reaction would be to just say, "Yeah, I'm fine. I'm yeah. fine." You know, mm. and then yeah, so yeah, That's because, it. yeah, because if because if it's a heavy thing, it's like well to. To go, you don't want to hear this. Like yeah. you know, that's possibly what you're thinking. It's like I don't know if you're. I mean, I'm not okay, but to save you the burden, I'm just going to say I'm fine. Yeah, but and the awkwardness, and the awkwardness yeah. yeah, exactly. But that's that shouldn't be the case. Yeah, because mm. for many years I was saying to people, just have the courage to ask the question. If it's if if they are okay, that's that's a great result. And if they're not, then you've started something. But the more I think about it, I think it's it's not so much having the courage. It's just it's creating an environment, like you said, Pete. And I think what you've done today is really powerful because there will be people who have lost someone who are in that stage you're in for the first few years where you probably weren't really dealing with it, um, who, you know, maybe just talking to a friend about that person, you know, finding someone they can... Yeah, it's a temptation to think about the end and, you know, the, the, I, I think as more time goes on, I think more about, you know, um, this, the good times that we had. You know, Rich is somebody who, you know... We would just have each other in absolute tears. I mean, the one in particular I remember was Rich came up with this great uh, segment called uh, uh, My Sharadio. And it was um, it was uh, basically sound effects and you had to, you'd ring up and it would be, you've got to piece the movie together. It's a movie or TV show, uh, for example. So, you know, um, it would be, um, you know, if it was a, a beer and then maybe uh, Hugh Laurie speaking, and then uh, the sound of an AFL football match. That would be side of house rules. Um, <laughs> side of house for rules. <laughs> yeah. So you got so you got like a yeah. beer or, or, or a drink. Oh yes, I Hugh Laurie. Oh yeah, a house. Yeah. 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 AFL football game. Rules. AFL Aussie rules. Yes. Yeah. So that was off the top of my head. So that's, that's really good off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really good. And it's the first time I've thought about Cider House Rules for many, many years. <laughs> yeah. Out of all the films. Yeah. So he 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 <laughs> Let's just take him. That's an impressive thing off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play a game of Mosher Radio. Um and um and he we had this morning where I think we had to fill in some time or something, and somebody we pre-recorded this segment often, and this was one of those times. And and we got the the the, uh, the right answer, but we only had I think one answer before that was wrong. And the producer said, "Let's you know, let's get more wrong answers in there." And all the calls had already gone. He said, "Well, all the call the calls are gone." And and the producer said, "Well, I could ring them back up and get them to guess again." <laughs> and and we just thought, so you're going to ring up somebody who's just ringing for a radio contest. <laughs> And then you've gone. Okay, it's it's over. Sorry, you didn't get on there. And then call them up and say, actually, can you can you come on and guess? <laughs> they're gonna think, shit, I've won this. I've won this. And then you're gonna, they're gonna go, yeah. Next call, there we got Melanie. What do you got? Uh, I think it's cider house rules. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your time, Mel. <laughs> and we laugh so hard at, at this, the very thought of doing that. <laughs> Oh, that, dude. <laughs> yeah, he he was, yeah, he was so much fun. Oh, that's great. Well, Pete, thank you very much for coming on, coming into the uh, tea house. Thank you. Uh, the dumplings coming out soon. Or... <laughs> I can organise some dumplings for you. Post house, post tea house, post tea house. Yeah, yeah. Post um, tea, Hugh Laurie. Post <laughs> post B A Baracus, Hugh Laurie. B A Baracus. Oh, hang on. Mr. T. <laughs> yes! Brian, you're the winner! <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Sorry, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much, Pete. Great to see you. I love you very much. Likewise, buddy. And so um, so uh, uh, I love you too. I love you too. <laughs> I, I, will, I will say this, that Ryan makes me laugh more than most people. Like we, When we were doing Rove, we often shared a dressing room. And like I said, with with what we had with Rich, and we would just crack up laughing and just like we role playing. We had this off many many of those kinds of things where we would role play to the point where we were in tears. Our, yeah. our, our, our running gag was <laughs> that we were, <laughs> we were both like in our dressing room, seductively fishing for <laughs> the potential of hooking up in our dressing room. <laughs> we're just in there going in that room by ourselves, going so oh oh I wouldn't. Wouldn't it be funny if we just, I don't know, if we just, just kissed you? Like, like just, like how funny would that be? Like, just, just a joke. I mean, like, just, 
<laughs> yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, like, I don't care either way, but like, I mean, I, oh, it would be so funny if you took your pants off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that would be amazing. That would be so that weird. Be, I mean, that would be one of those stories we always tell. Oh, we're telling it? on a yeah. podcast and years to come. And, and yeah, I mean, I mean, if we're going to go that, this is. I mean, we can go all the way. I mean, let's... Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine if we just went out there and told them, oh, Pete and I just had sex. <laughs> the look on their faces oh, would be like, what? So, you two? You, you two? two? <laughs> you two? Get out of this. I never predicted you two would hook up. <laughs> this is during a commercial yeah. break. I mean, this is... Just amazing. as a prank, it would be so... <laughs> just, anyway, let's yeah, try it. Yeah. <laughs> let's just do it. Lock the door. <laughs> Oh, good. We were literally, that would go on for about ten minutes <laughs> by ourselves in the dressing room, um, which was the, which ended up always feeling strange that there was no audience, <laughs> <laughs> no audience. Now there is good. Um, Pete, thanks, thanks, thanks guys. so much. Great podcast. Keep up the great work. Thanks, thanks Peter. Thank you.